Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to an anime review. Today we're looking at the final episode of Junji Ito Collection, episode 12. So that means I'll be reviewing the whole series too as well. Now, I know from some of you, you might be like, wait, there's going to be an OVA. Yes, there is going to be an OVA, uh, according to Mal and, you know, from, re from various things I've seen. Uh, it's going to be two episodes that's going to focus on Tomi. But I'm going to treat that as its own thing, so I'm not going to clue that into this. I, when I review it, I'll review it as Tomi. Um, and if that's released bi-weekly or whatever, or weekly, whatever they're going to do with it, uh, I will review each episode because, that, you know, that's going to be its own thing. And I'm really curious how they're going to do Tomi, because uh, I love the manga for it. But at the same time, like, how could you do it in two episodes? I'm curious about that. Uh, but I will say that Junji Ito Collection kind of ended on a nice note for the most part. It wasn't a super great episode, but at the same time, it had two of the more fan, I want to say, favorite characters in terms of the model, who was the really creepy model, and uh, Sochiro, who has definitely been probably one of the more prominent characters of the show, appearing like not once, but like several times in uh, Junji Ito's stories for the, the, the collection series, at least. Um, the first story, though, was what really, I think, took it for this week, because... I loved how it went, where they, they, this one guy found a nectar in this tribal village, and, you know, he, he brought it home with them because they, they, I guess, I don't know if he stole it or they actually gave it to him, but from what it sounds like originally, he sounds like he stole it, but then they tell him that, you know, don't be noticed when eating it, so I'm presuming they probably did give it to him, but it's just like, why do you even make it sound like you stole it? You, you made it sound like so sneaky and shady. You, if they gave it to you, they gave it to you. It's no big deal, right? Um... But one of the warnings he said was, when you're eating the, this, this nectar, do not be noticed by people. And the guy goes, what do you mean by noticed by people, like, eating it? He goes, just don't be noticed when you're eating it. And we find out the hard way what that means, because it, it's not by people, it's noticed by this creature that has, like, it's like a giant tree that has branches that can disappear and, and reappear, and the branches are what targets people that are eating the nectar from it. So you could eat it. But you have to make sure to really pay attention to where it is. If it sees you eating it, it crushes you. And I was—I legitimately jumped out of my chair slightly because I had my headphones on, which you know while I was watching it, and I just heard this loud, <laughs> like explosion. When you saw this character immediately explode on screen, it's gonna be the thumbnail. It's kind of violent, but it, it just puts the emphasis on like, holy crap! That legitimately took me by surprise. I thought that was really cool the way they did that. Um, but everyone got addicted to this nectar because it was so good. It tasted so, you know, uh, sweet and all this. And it made other foods taste like horrible. And, and for the most people, you know, they, they needed this nectar now in their life. And it was spreading around according to the stories because apparently other people were stealing it and taking it from the houses that they, they went to visit that had the nectar. So it, it's almost in a way like, yeah, you know, the guy warned you guys about not doing it. But then the one friend who seemed like he was the, probably the smartest of the group who somehow was kind of the most also twisted, where he's like, I was experimenting with my friends to see how they got killed by it. I was curious. I'm like, damn, dude, you kind of messed up about that, doing that. But he goes and finds the map that leads to the tribe village, and he finds the tree, and he's like, oh my god, this is nectar for me, he, like, stabs it. And, dude, you knew you were going to get killed by this thing, like, legitimately. The girl, the girls, the one girl warned him that she saw the giant thing appear and just out of nowhere, just appear out of nowhere and crush her. Or crust the, I was across the one friend of theirs. Like, what the... Did you not see the thing th then disappearing? Like, were you that really that stupid at the end? I don't know. But it was a good story. I liked it. Uh, the second story with Sochiro was about rumors. And it really wasn't scary, per se. But it does show a kind of realistic concept about rumors. I mean, rumors, especially if you are if you were in high school or regular school, whatever. Even I think even back in college, you would hear rumors. But rumors... You know, they're very funny because they spread like wildfire. You know, you could hear someone talking about something like, hey, hey, you know, did you hear about this this or that? Did you hear about these people hooking up? And for the most part, Sochiro is putting in people's minds by going up to certain people or whispering in, like, really quietly. Hey, did you know that this is happening to Sochiro? And he's, like, trying to make, make himself this, this superstar of, like, saving older women. Uh, he, he's related to a, this impressive band member from this one group. And it's like... Oh, Dude, you are such an ass. Sochiro is an asshole, but he, he's, he's fun in his own right. But the the, the uh, weird thing was then he put the picture of the uh, the model up, the one from way back when, I think like episode two, of uh, that creepy model. And, you know, they're like, what what is that? Oh my, and they, then the rumors again started when, you know, even though it was outed, they started up again. And everyone started believing this rumor that apparently if you go to this this area with mud and all that it'll make you look beautiful and one of the girls did did that just that but Sochi was the one who set it up and then all of a sudden the model appears and she's like why are you here in my secret spot and I'm like, oh. I was like oh but I love how Sochi was like you know she this girl thinks that Sochi was gonna die but realistically the model's probably gonna love this dude because he's like oh my god what an ugly and yet beautiful you know, person I'm like oh my god 
I'm like, dude, you're you're very weird, Sochiro. I mean, it's funny, but he's weird. Um, so, Junji Ito Collection. Let's talk about this real fast. It's not going to take me too long to talk about this, because I've, I've already stretched out with all these episodes and, and talking about like my issues with Junji Ito. I'm not going to go into super amounts of details, but... The Junji Ito Collection has definitely been... Uh, okay series. I want to say okay. It's not horrible. It's not like, oh my god, it's going to just barely pass. It's it's okay. You know, some of these stories have been really good and most of the stories have been whole hum. Some have been just downright terrible and then that one episode which was disgusting to watch, which was like episode, what, 13 I think? Or not, how could it be 13 was 12? It was episode uh, 11 I want to say? Or 10? It was, 10, it was 10, I'm sorry, it was 10. Um, and by the way, not 13, because the weekend the show didn't go up to 13 episodes. That was stupid on my part. But anyways, um, you know, the Genji Ito collection had its moments where it was, like, underwhelming, because I, I, I've i read a lot of the things by Junji Ito, and I, I love the dude. He, he makes some great horror stories, and some of the more prominent short stories, I was like, why aren't these more, why aren't these in there? These are short stories, too, but they have good conclusions, they have good, you know, op, uh, concepts, and they just would have been great for a horror story collection, but they weren't. And I mean, I get that he has—he wanted to put some shine, I think, shine on the ones that aren't as popular, or per se, or maybe not even as, as well known. But the same token, I'm like, but you know, these are the stories that you know they, the people want to see animated now. They want to see some of these short stories being real you know, prominent, like the Siren or the the cursed. Uh, um, I want to say Tomb Raiders that were going around trying to steal from uh, mu- uh, not museums, but they were stealing from like crypts and stuff, and then they find out like this weird backstory with that. I don't want to get I don't want to spoil it for in case you guys haven't heard of it, but you know, there's a lot of good stories that Junji Uta had, and we didn't see any of them really here. You know, they they were like meh overall, and I was kind of disappointed about that. But you know, Tomi will probably be a savior for the OVA of it, but I'm not like I said, I'm not I'm not counting that toward this because it's like that might be part of the Junji Uta collection as a whole. But the same token, it's an OVA and it's classified one. So I'm like, I can't, I'm not going to boost that up and let that be what causes the series to go either better or worse. So it is what it is right now. That's why overall, you know, given that the animation for Junji Ito Collections was really, really well done. I, I really had no issues with it. Only a few times here and there was kind of poor with some of the, with some of the character designs and stuff like that. And some of the more weirder stuff. And that one disgusting episode really like... No. Um, but, you know, for the most part, it was a good thing. You know, you definitely could see that his artwork was in there. And, you know, even though it was animated, it looked really well done. So I, I can't take it away from that. The music opening was solid. I really liked the opening. I think the song was okay. Uh, and voice acting, all the different voice actors and actresses really did a phenomenal job with their characters. I was very happy with that. Um, you know, I think we, I think there is a dub for it uh, coming out, or it did come out already, but I haven't seen it yet, so I can't tell you off that. Off that, but the voice acting, at least for Japanese actors and actresses, was really good. I liked it. So overall, you know, in terms of like the aesthetics, Junji Ito Collection worked as a whole, and I was ha- very happy with that. It's just more so the narratives and stories were very hit or miss with some of them just ending so abruptly with no conclusions, you know, anticlimactic concepts and just overall mess stories. That's why if I had to review the Junji Ito collection between A through F, I'm gonna give it a solid C. I think a C is perfect score for it because really, like I said before, you can't give it anything lower, I think. It's, it'd be kind of just rude to it because it, it really looked well, it sounded good, you know, some of the stories were good and for the most part it's a horror story. So horror is always gonna be subjective. Some people might love it and some people might really hate it. Uh, I definitely know that there's some people who love every single episode of Junji Ito Collection and are like, oh my god, I haven't seen a bad episode yet and you know, that's fine. I mean, if you think these are horror filled or creepy or ups, uh, you know, upsetting, then it's doing its job. But horror in general is a very subjective thing because some people find something scary and some people find things just like whatever. It's not really a big deal. So I, I can't, you know, rate it too, too low either because of that factor right there. Um, but what do you guys think about the Genji Ito Collection as a whole? What do you think about today's episode and just the whole series in general? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. As always, guys and girls, if you liked my review, think about hitting the subscribe button, sharing the video around, and, you know, definitely follow me as we continue our reviews. I will talk to you guys later. God bless you all. Until I pass across again in the next review, have a great one, everyone. Bye-bye.